Hey Brenda Files, welcome back to the Node Concept. This is SD and with me Shubham from Blender File and today we are doing the color ramp. Uh, well actually not today. <laughs> uh, this video is uh, being made right now because I cannot go home because it's raining outside heavily. So we thought uh, to make another tutorial. <laughs> so we are just continuing the Node Concept and the color ramp today. So, uh, basically color ramp is you know, used to uh, manipulate, it's like a kind of a, uh, what do you call that, RGB curve, and though I'll call it better than RGB curve. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we have a plane over here and we have a material, we're going to add in a converter, uh, color ramp, boom, okay, that. And as soon as I press Control Shift Z, oh sorry, as soon as I press Shift Z, you can see we have only one color. There is no gradient actually there over there. So uh, why is it because uh, it is because of the properties of the color ramp? Okay, so uh, it takes only one factor input and can be uh, and it does a lot of things over here and gives the alpha and the color output. So the factor it controls uh, the position of uh, these things. So uh, every mar uh, there are these things which I call the markers, and the selected marker is you know represented by a lighter color and dotted line, and you can add in uh, new markers from here and delete them by pressing this button, and you can flip them. So black goes there, white goes here, just like that. Okay, cool. <coughs> so, next is this color mode, so you can use RGB or HSV and then HSL, well I don't know what HSL is, you just uh, leave it to RGB, that's better, huh. best, most used and things. Then there is the interpolation, so these are the blend types between you know, this black and the white, so a linear gives a linear fall of linear blend, we have ease, and then there is cardinal, then there's b spline. Oh, b spline is actually giving you know uh, the biggest uh, blend over here, and that's you know, kind of cool, <laughs> right? And then there is the constant, so it gives constant colors after this, after that. So that's thing. That's how constant works, right? So uh, let's get back to these. Okay. Right. So to actually mark it. Right, so to actually uh, see this in action, we're gonna add in a texture. Let's use oops. texture, texture, nice texture. Where's that? Where's that? Uh, here. All right. So we'll be increasing the scale and here. All right. Whew. Okay. So you can see it is quite stretched out. It's stretched out. I don't know why. Uh, well, anyway. So you can see it's very detailed and there are many varieties of colors between gray and uh, white away. So we're going to put this factor into the factor and now if you press control shift left click you can see uh, we still see the noise texture because both the uh, pointers are at their extreme position. Well, I did not tell you about these ones, right? <laughs> so, uh, the marker on this end is represented as 0, and on this end is represented as 1. So, marker between them will be given a number accordingly. So, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So, you can select them from here as well if you just can't click on this. And then there is the position. So, position is over here 0 and over here 1. So if you select this one and keep uh, changing the position, it actually drags it uh, on the scale. So that's how you manipulate it, right? And you can see it's affecting here. I'll just remove that, right? So uh, the factor which is going over here, it also is from between ranging between zero and one. So uh, the factor is actually the position which uh, output is to come. So a zero factor means the black color will be coming and if I switch it then the white color which is over here so a position of zero and factor of zero 
then the output will be the color at the position 0. So that is what factor is doing and using this noise actual factor we are actually randomizing the factor and we're just generating a noise pattern over here and what you can do is you can select this and you can change the color from here I'll just make it blue so all the portion which are getting black are now getting uh, are now getting changed into blue and I can add in a few more over here and uh, oops, oops. Uh, over here here and let's kind of make a rainbow so it's been raining since six o'clock in the evening. Okay. And this. This is about you. All right. Cool. Rainbow. Yeah, this looks great. All right. So. This is how it is looking. So, because uh, most of the noise is having a, a value between uh, you know these points, uh, that's why we are getting mostly the green and yellow color. So you can change these things to get a more smoother fall off. Now you can see some bit of cyan over here. And if you change to to constant, you'll get very rough and what do we call sharper patterns? Yeah, sharper. So this is how the color ramp is working. Uh, another thing we can do is you know, add in another color ramp that over here. All right. Now, uh, if you want to increase the contrast between uh, these, so we can also do that with these. You can just adjust them. It will make them more darker and quite a little lighter. So. This is how you can control the contrast and then you can use this with another color ramp and with different colors to play around with and that's that's basically you know the color ramp so uh, it found it to use it in many places like you know uh, mostly you know playing around with the factors and uh, factors like you know, uh, gloss map specularity or bump map and controlling those Things. So it's very useful and handy and awesome to play around with. And the alpha output, it will give you know a transparency over there. Uh, um, well, well. Uh, let's just add in some shields. Use and D. Change that to uh, ooh, transparent. Okay. And like alpha over here and one. We need the color. We need all these. I'll factor make it green right so uh, decreasing down the alpha of these oh sorry <laughs> alpha sorry <laughs> now you can see the green color so wherever there is zero alpha uh, we'll be getting black which uh, which will be uh, getting the diffuse shader and whichever part is uh, whitish will get the transparent over here and thus we can see the transparency and if I just increase the contrast more now you can see uh, these black portions are uh, actually due to these. alright so there it is transparent and the rest of the place is getting diffused so that is basically how the color ramp works <coughs> sorry and that concludes the tutorial we have done the color ramp I hope you understood and learned something and do subscribe to watch our next video which will be containing six nodes all the combined separate nodes and there that will be going to be fun so subscribe stay tuned and you can follow us on facebook at facebook.com slash and we hope to see you in our next video bye